Hello everyone. Welcome to the series of data structures tutorial. Let's see the first data structure which is stack in this video. Now when I say stack, stack is a data structure which follows algorithm last in first out or it is also called as first in last out. So let's understand how the stack works. Suppose there is some container. So it can be array or it can be linked list. You can implement stack using array or you can implement stack using linked list. So let's go for the array implementation first. So suppose this is array. Now stack follows last in first out algorithm. That means the element which is inserted last will come out first. Now it is one end closed data structure. So I can, I can insert or remove element only from one end. So the, suppose I insert some element then the insert operation, this insert operation is called as push operation. And if I remove some element, then remove operation is called as pop operation. So suppose if I insert 10, then it will go from this end and it will be stored at the bottom. If I insert the second element 20, then again it will go from this end and it will be stored onto the top of 10. Next element will be stored onto the top of 20 and so on. Now when I remove the elements, first element which will come out will be 30 since it is the topmost element. Second element which will come out will be 20 and then 10 will come out. So output, if I, if I see the output of pop operations, it will be 30, 20, 10. So this is how it is last in first out that means the element which is inserted at the end will come out first. So suppose so suppose this is an array with size 5 so indices will vary from 0 to 4 so this will be 0 index element, first index element, second index element, third index element and fourth index element. Now how will be the implementation of stack so there will be functions so when i implement using c++ i have to take some class which is class stack and in that class stack i have to take some data members and member functions so what will be the data members and member functions so if i declare some class which is class stack then in that class i have to take this array as a data member because i will need some array to hold elements so that array will become one data member then after that, now this stack may have some elements or it may have, may not have. So if there are some elements, say 20, 20, 30, then I need to keep track, keep track of topmost element of the stack. So which is the topmost element, this 30, that means I have to keep track of the index of the topmost element. And for that, I have to take one more variable inside the class, which is top variable. So that will be the other data member. The operations on stack will be the member functions of the class like push function will be there pop function will be there apart from that there will be function like is full and is empty so these two functions will will be for checking the corner cases that means there are two corner cases which happens in case of any data structure it may be stack or queue it is, it is underflow and overflow so if i overflow means i am trying to push the element onto the full stack Underflow is I am trying to remove the element from the empty stack. So for the, for those for checking those corner conditions, full stack and empty stack, I have taken two more member functions, which is is full and is empty. Now, how will be the implementation for these functions? So let's understand. So initially, suppose there is no element into the stack. So right now there is no element inside the stack. Now what will be the values of data members of class stack when, when there is no element in the stack. So inside the array there will be garbage values or you may initialize the values to zero. So that is up to you. What about the top data member where the top will point. Since there is no element inside the stack top should not be having any value between zero to four. So it can be any other value which is not in the range of 0 to 4. So suppose for simplicity I take it as minus 1. So it is 
So instead of the constructor, I will initialize the top to minus one. Now when I insert the element onto the stack or when I push the element onto the stack, first top will increase from minus one to zero and then value will be stored at zeroth index. So suppose if I push first element which is 10, then minus one is incremented to zero and then 10 is stored here. If I push the next element which is 20, then the top will be incremented from zero which is previous value to one and then the next element is stored at first index. If I again increase, if I again push the element onto the stack, top will be incremented to two first and then 30 is stored here. That means while I push the elements, the algorithm is first I will increment the top value and then I will store the element at incremented index. So for next element, first top will become three and then element is stored here. Then for next one, it will be stored here. For a pop operation, the algorithm is exactly opposite. First you will fetch the element or first you will return the element and then you will decrement the top value. That means if I pop out some element, then first 50 will be returned and then top will, get, top will be decremented from 4 to 3. Again, if I call the pop function, then 40 will be returned and then top will, get, top, top will be decremented from 3 to 2 and so on. So this is how push and pop functions will be implemented. Now what about the overflow and underflow? Suppose I have all the elements inside my stack 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and now I try to push the element onto this stack. So in this case it will be overflow. That means when the stack is full, stack is full when top value is 4. Or in general, stack is full when top value is size minus one. After that, if I try to push the element, it will be overflow. So for full, for the is full function, the definition will be top equals to size minus one. So it will return either true or false, depending on whether the condition is true or false. For stack empty, there is there is no element here. So in that case, top value will be minus one. So this, since it is initialized to minus one inside the constructor, it is going to be minus one for empty. So for empty, the condition will be top equals to minus one. For is empty function, the condition will be top equals to minus one. So let's implement class stack. As I told you, inside class stack, I will take two data members. One is array to hold the elements. So I declare int arr of fayu array of five elements and I will take one more data member which is top value. Now in the public I will write the member functions first one is default constructor then push function is there push function is taking one integer argument which is nothing but element to be pushed onto the stack then pop function will be there pop function will return integer which is nothing but element we are popping then for exception handling there will be functions is full and is empty so it will be bool is full and bool is empty so these will be the functions now here i have taken fixed size stack that means i have taken array of size for you you can make it variable size by using dynamic memory allocation that means if you don't want to fix the size to for you then what you can do you can take one pointer here and for that pointer you will allocate a memory and that memory allocation will depend on size of the stack so that that can be also implementation which is using dynamic array so i am going for static array fixed size array even i can make it as a macro so size I, I will define it as macro so hash define size for you now let me write down the definitions for the functions so first one is default constructor stack scope position stack in the default constructor I will initialize the top value to minus one then push function I will implement return type is void class name is stack 
push function is taking one integer argument which is nothing but data to be pushed so in the push function I told you first we'll increment the top and then I will store the element at incremented index so I, I, I can say top plus plus and then ARR of top equals to data so this can be done but this definition is having two different lines if I want to write more precise definition I can write a single line definition also in single line definition I will increment the top here itself so I will say ARR of plus plus top equals to data so this is more precise then in the pop function return type is void then class name is stack scope solution name of the function pop now here first I will retrieve the data then I will okay so let me write int data equals to ARR of top so this is retrieval of data then I will decrement the top value top minus minus and then I return the data so return data so these three lines of code will be there and if you want to write single line definition then this can also be done you will write only return ARR of top minus minus so this is more precise that means first I am this is post decrement so since it is a post decrement first return will happen and then top will be decremented which is correct then functions is full and is empty so bool then stack is the name of the class is full for full condition is top equals to size minus one so I will say if topic equals to size minus one return true else return false or I can simply write single line return top equals to size minus one that means the comparison is happening here itself and it is returning the value which is either true or false then is empty function will be there in the is empty function I will write condition for stack empty which is top equals to minus one so these will be the definitions now how to call these functions to call these functions in main I have to create the object of stack class so in main function first let me create object of stack say s1 is the object and I call push function using that object and I am pushing few elements say 12 I am pushing then 24 36 some numbers and then I pop out the elements so it will be s1 dot pop three times so this will be the class now let me compile and run the code g++ file name is tag.cpp it is getting compiled there is no error when I run this it is giving output 36 24 12 so the program is running now what will happen if I call the pop function one more time suppose I call pop function one more time compile it run it so it is giving some garbage value into the output this is because now the stack is empty and still I am returning the element which is ARR of top minus minus so when I when I call push or pop functions before I execute actual statement I need to check for exception so here I will check if when I am supposed to push if stack is not full then push the element so I will say if not I will call the is full function if not is full then store the element else I, I will throw some exceptions so I will say throw this is overflow so if the stack is full then it will be overflow so I will I will throw some message which is overflow similarly in the pop function I will check if not is empty that means if stack is not empty then return the element else throw some message which is underflow so I will throw underflow message here
and then I will write I will call these fun uh, functions in try try block so it will be try here catch will be there so it is it is actually uh, receiving const char star which is nothing but the message and I will print that message same thing I have to do in for the pop function so since we are popping out four elements and we are pushing three elements there is underflow now here you can see that I have written the code in a single file only one file is there which is stack.cpp but actually we are supposed to divide the class into different files one header file which will have declaration of class and source file there will be two source file one source file will have definition of class functions and other will ha will be having main function so I will divide this code into three different files one is stack.h then stack.cpp will be there and one more file will be there which is main.cpp so stack.h will have declaration of class stack so this declaration which is class stack I will move it from stack.cpp to stack.h then stack.cpp will have definitions of member function so all the definitions will be there in the stack.cpp and main function definition will be inside the main.cpp so I will move this from stack.cpp to main.cpp so main.cpp is having only main function so this is stack.h which is having declaration of class stack class stack.cpp is there which is having definitions of class stack and main.cpp is there so in main.cpp I have to include iostream and I have to also include stack.h then in stack.cpp also I have to include stack.h let me move this hash define statement in header stack.h so now it will be hash include stack.h here so this is how I will divide the code into three files stack.h will be there stack.cpp will be there and main.cpp will be there so now let me compile and run so it will be g++ I will compile stack.cpp and main.cpp it is throwing me error in stack.cpp stack.h s is lowercase here also in main.cpp stack.h s is small so let's compile so it is getting compiled now when I run it is giving me the output even you can make this main function menu driven so that instead of pushing some hard code values you can push the values which are entered by the user so that implementation I am leaving up to you this was about the stack data structure please like the video share the video and don't forget to subscribe